Hello, budding historians. I'm glad to see you again via the, the video. Uh, this week we're studying, among other things, uh, the period of iconoclasm when those in the Orthodox Church, uh, many of them became very um, opposed to images of Christ. The Orthodox Church, both the, uh, the, the Greek and the Eastern and the Russian, all three of them, have a grand history of art which is designed to draw a person into a sense of uh, Jesus' presence. Um, however, this is a controversial thing because it's easy to move from using a tool to become aware of Christ's presence to thinking that the tool is Christ or, or, or produces Christ's presence, which is, of course is not true at all. And as I read about that, I thought about my the own um, icon that I own, which is uh, the Savior. It's a, a Russian icon uh, painted by Andrei Rublev in about 1400 AD. It was lost for many years and then found uh, and buried beyond uh, in a church in about 1918. This is um, a, a grand picture. I love it because it's a reproduction of the icon. I didn't steal the real thing. I just want you to know. But it's a, a reproduction which uh, was blessed by the patriarch of the Russian Orthodox Church. I bought it in the, the Mother Church, the Grand uh, Church of Our Savior Cathedral in Moscow, Russia, when I had the chance to be there several years ago. And I'll talk maybe a little bit more about that uh, next week when we're actually discussing the uh, Russian Church. But I thought while we're talking about icons, it'd be good just to let you see one. And I really enjoy this. It does give me a sense, um, the ability to remember and focus on Christ's presence. Uh, I use it sometimes as uh, an act for drawing me into a state of prayer. I want to say a couple words about our task together. Uh, first, thanks for doing the work. Uh, thanks for working hard to get your original replies to me done uh, no later than Sunday evening so that we have uh, Monday and Tuesday then to reply to each other. And uh, the work you're doing is great work. Good answers, uh, good discussion. I do want to say on the, when you do the three historical events or trends, if you would um, just put in parentheses an approximate date, sometimes it'll be the whole spectrum of the period that we're looking at. Sometimes it'll be a particular day. Uh, but whatever it is, if you'd put it in, because I want to I do everything I can to keep you with a sense of the historic and the sense of the dates that are attached to what we're doing. But nice work, and uh, I look forward to, to reading the, the very last ones um, from Wednesday night. Usually we'll have them due on Tuesday night. Uh, this time I gave you a little extra grace because last week we started with Martin Luther King Day. Um, this week we're looking at three events again, and then a more philosophical discussion on what is the relationship between political history, of which we're reading quite a bit, and um, the history of God's people, the history of the church. As we go through, we'll find there'll be the constant interplay, and uh, I look forward to your discussion and the ways of articulating the significance of uh, secular history or political history uh, to the history of God's people, the church. Well, thanks once again. I look forward to reading to your posts, and if you ever just want to drop by my office for a moment and talk about some of the things that you've read or about some of the posts you've done, uh, I'd be delighted to do that. Thanks, and happy posting.